Can you actually use AI with construction estimating? I asked ChatGPT to help me estimate the cost of the concrete slab and the price it came up with was 5% of my own first principles estimate. I'd still never trust it to quote a job. AI is a tool, but you need to learn to use it wisely. So in this video, we're gonna explore five practical uses of large language models like ChatGPT to help you become a better construction estimator. I'm also gonna put a link in the description to a prompt guide you can download. But before we start, I wanna give you a general guide to how to most effectively prompt large language models to get the output you want. Whenever you're prompting an LLM, there's four things you have to give it. You have to give it a task, background information, instructions and expectations, and a desired output format. So using as an example, where I've given a task, background information, instructions and expectations, and a desired output format. I've asked ChatGBT, act as an expert construction estimator. Your task is to prepare an estimate for a two meter by two meter concrete slab that is 400 millimeters thick. I'm a subcontractor tendering the concrete package for a road project in Sydney. The scope includes the supply and install of the concrete, no excavation. Be very thorough and provide a concise breakdown of every element, return it in a table. So I've given it a task, context, instructions and expectations, and an output format. It's given me a detailed cost breakdown of my concrete slab. So it's included concrete supply, concrete pump, formwork, reinforcement, bar chairs, labor, tools and consumables, site allowance and admin and overhead and profit and it's come up with a price of two thousand eight hundred dollars and just very quickly looking at each of these rates they actually look pretty good now when people struggle with prompting llms what they tend to do is not to give it enough context and background information you'll see in the example prompt i gave i gave it a ton of detailed instructions the way you have to think about these models is imagine you've got access to albert einstein but he's sitting in a basement and the only information he can get is what he reads through the prompt. He knows nothing about the task, the context, the background, unless you tell them. You can't expect to treat them like a coworker at your business who has a whole lot of implied information. You have to think about it like Albert Einstein locked in a basement. Okay, so the first use case I like the LLMs for construction estimating, and I use it for this all the time, is when you get 100 tender documents from a client, scope of work, specifications, drawings, all these other documents, and you want a concise summary of what they've given you, you can upload the documents and ask them to summarize and give you relevant key points to the task you're trying to accomplish. Okay, so as an example, I found a random construction scope of works online. I uploaded into ChatGPT and I asked it, attached as a scope of works for a project I'm tendering as a construction contractor, can you please provide a quick summary of the scope, the inclusions, the exclusions, and what exactly am I being asked to price? It's given me a one paragraph summary, and then it's given me phase by phase of the project what I'm being asked to do during the design phase and during the construction phase. So during the construction phase, for example, it's told me I have to allow for the demolition and removal of existing structure and services, the construction of a new change room and facility, including four change rooms, medical rooms, public toilets, store and irrigation rooms, internal finishes, and blah, blah, blah. It's also listed the exclusions that excavation I don't need to allow for, works outside the defined footprint, variations without written council approval, and it's also given me a summary of the tender requirements. It explained there's a 12 month defect liability and liquidated damages of $110 a day. Now that is a 70 page document. It's summarized into quick dot points. Now, obviously when you're actually going and doing the actual estimate, you're gonna have to cross check some of this because these can make mistakes, but it's a good, simple place to start. Use case number two is understanding the scope. What tends to happen when people price projects is they price the tasks they know pretty accurately. If anything, they tend to be a bit conservative. What happens is people miss scope. ChatGPT and other LLMs are incredibly useful brainstorming tools. So you can take an initial scope of works and ask it to help you prepare a work breakdown structure covering every activity in detail. Okay, so the prompt I've used now is based on the documentation provided. Can you please prepare a detailed work breakdown structure? I want to know exactly what activities I need to allow for in my estimate. So it's got broken down into design phase and construction phase, and it's outputted this in 
a table as I've asked it. So during design, it's got site investigations, authority consultations, stakeholder engagement, design development, permits and approvals, and so on. During construction, it's got preliminaries and site establishment, demolition, site preparation, civil works, structural concrete, masonry, construction, and blah, 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 blah. What we could do now is we could ask it to provide even more details. This is a good starting point. We could then say, for example, structural concrete, break this down into every task involved in concrete construction work. So supplying the concrete, the reinforcement, detailed excavation, form work, all these tasks. We could ask it to break it down more and more and help us prepare a comprehensive work breakdown structure. Use case number three is preparing a budget price to cross-check your own estimate. So like I showed you at the start when I gave you the example, the prompt and actually prepared the cost of the concrete slab, you could look at any one of these items and give it, say, based on the location, the prices of things in that area, prepare a budget price based on a 10 meter by 20 meter concrete slab or any sort of structure you choose, you can get it to prepare pretty good, accurate budget prices that you can use to cross check your own work. Now, I, that's why I said at the start, I would never fully rely on ChatGPT or AI to do this because the task is just way too important. Now, use case number four is helping you prepare your assumptions and exclusions. AI is great at just dumping in a whole lot of information and thoughts and getting it to order them. So as you're preparing your estimate, you can just register all your qualifications and assumptions, note them down as you're going, and upload these to ChatGPT and say, help prepare my detailed letter of offer and assumptions and exclusions list, break down everything I should exclude if I haven't thought of all the exclusions. So when you actually submit your bid, it can be crystal clear what you've allowed for. Okay, so for this example in this building, I haven't actually prepared an estimate. And I'm just using this to showcase the types of capabilities that you can use an LLM for. So as an example, I've said to it, okay, so for my construction estimate, can you please prepare a detailed list of assumptions and qualifications I should allow for in my price? Please note anything that is unclear and what we are expecting the client to provide for this. For example, we assume the client will approve our design within a reasonable time range. Now, this is great because we can use these assumptions as a basis for our letter of offer when we submit our estimate to the client. So now it's broken it down into a list of assumptions we should document. So general assumptions and client supplied information or outputs, and then qualifications and clarifications that we might have to ask them. So for an example, as an assumption, it's assuming all stakeholder input will be coordinated by the principal during the design phase. So all required site and utility connection approvals will be granted without delays beyond our control. Now that's a great example of something you would actually want to include in a letter of offer for this project because it's something that can impact your cost and delivery during construction. It's assuming client supplied information, any permits and approvals will be issued within a reasonable time frame, will clarify or resolve any ambiguities quickly in the drawings or specifications. And then we've also got qualifications and clarifications. No allowance for temporary works. All demolition will be disposed of to a licensed facility. Security system pricing assumes compatibility with Digifort. I mean, I haven't read the documents, but it looks like great information to actually include in your tender submission. So as an example of testing how it can review an estimate, I've put together a really simple estimate for a 10 meter by 15 meter concrete slab. And I actually use ChatGPT to prepare this estimate. It's got all the activities, the quantities, the rates, and the totals. Now, I've intentionally doctored two things. I made it $10 a meter cubed for concrete supply, which is way too cheap. And I intentionally put an error in the pumping allowance. So it's not 22.5 by 35. I've just made the total $5. Let's see, picks up the error. So I've gone and put this into ChatGVT and I've said, okay, attached to my estimate, can you please provide a detailed review of this? And can you please check rates are okay, that there are no formula errors and I've not missed any tasks. It picked up the pumping allowance and it said the total should be 787.5 and that's likely a typo total, so good job. However, it hasn't picked up the incorrect concrete rate. It's actually said this when it's checked the unit rates. It said concrete supplied 280 to 350, which isn't the rate I used in the estimate, but this is typical. Now, what's likely happened is because I actually used ChatGPT to originally create this estimate, it's got confused between the document I've uploaded and the table above. 
that's why when you're doing different tasks in ChatGPT, it's always better to use different tabs because there's a term called a context window and it's when it looks back at the past information. If you have conflicting information, it can potentially get confused. But overall, it's a pretty good tool to do this. You still have to check it yourself, but it's a good additional layer if you've prompted it correctly. But just remember, try to use different chats for different tasks so the context of the LLM is not getting confused. So that's what ChatGPT and LLMs are good for, for estimating. What are they not good for? Well, my general philosophy is that estimating is way too important to blindly rely on what something like ChatGPT gives you. Go the fundamental thing is if you underquote a job, misquote a job, misfrost a job, you can go bankrupt very fast. That's why I would always be doing my own estimates and use it more as a checking and brainstorming tool rather than relying on it blindly without actually understanding what it's doing. Now, what I have found it's particularly bad at is full project estimates. When you start to have larger projects with complicated scope, does tend to fall apart of it. It's good for specific budget pricing, as I've shown you. It's terrible at actually reading drawings and implied from this doing quantity takeoffs. I've noticed it's really bad at reading drawings, particularly when you get complicated structural drawings with section views and things like this. You just can't do it. And from this, it makes it almost impossible to do accurate quantity takeoffs. But that's just one use of large language models in construction management. If you want to learn about all the other uses, then check out this complete guide on ChatGPT for construction managers we've put together.